Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I will be analyzing the company of Edible Garden, which was actually meant to go public this past Friday, April 29th, but it's still not publicly traded, so I'm imagining that today, so now on Monday, it will then start going public. It is meant to go public in the Nasdaq under the ticker symbol EDBL. As always, my aim with these videos is to analyze the company based on their SEC filing, which by the way, if you want to check it out yourselves, it will be just linked down below in the description. And afterwards, if you find this video interesting, if you find the company interesting, then you can go and actually you should go and do your own due diligence on it before investing in this or actually any stock whatsoever. With that said though, and before I go into the whole analysis of the company and so on, let me quickly give you a short overview of the main topics that I will be covering today. First, I will start with a general introduction to the company and we will also look at some key metrics, followed by a quick look at the industry and competitors, then we will go into the financials, which will compare the ones of Edible Garden with two other competitors, which I selected Hydro Farm Holdings and App Harvest. Then we will go into the IPO price and valuation, which again the valuation we will compare it to the two competitors. And finally, as always, I will be giving my personal opinion on the company and also my future plans with it. With that said though, and after I remind you that if you enjoyed the video, it would be really super, super awesome if you could just give it a like. And please also consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see also more IPO videos in the future. But with that said, let's go for it. Edible Garden is a controlled environment agriculture farming company. It uses hydroponic vertical greenhouses to sustainably grow organic herbs and lettuces. And hydroponic, if you are not very technical like myself, it basically just means that instead of growing plants with soil underneath them, they just grow in something which is called a nutrient solution. Amongst the benefits of this vertical farming, we have first of all that as we know, the surface on earth is limited. Every year we are more and more people and the same surface that we were using before to basically have crops and produce food for everyone might not be enough also in the future. So it's great to have vertical farming because in one same surface, we can have several layers and produce food for basically to feed different people. Secondly, it also allows for a very specific environment to be, to be created because you can monitor the temperature, the humidity, and all the different variables to um, basically achieve the highest production possible. And also the other benefit is that you have no seasonality since you can just regulate all the different variables of temperature, water, humidity, and everything. You can just get to produce the lettuces or whatever herbs you produce all year round. Additionally, Edible Garden uses a closed loop in which basically all the drain water is reduced and they even collect water with reverse osmosis. If you are not very familiar with this, this might seem very specific, but actually similar companies to Edible Garden are also employing similar techniques, so it's nothing exclusive from them. Then on top of that, they have also developed patented, sof patented software sorry, called Green Thumb that assists in tracking plants through the supply chain. So basically everything to run the farm from sales data to reports, forecasting, inventory management, amongst others. Currently they have 10 SKUs, so stock keeping units, basically different products that they are selling, including herbs, lettuces, basil, and vegan protein powder. And these are sold in over 4,000 different supermarkets and distributors across Northeast, Midwest, and Mid-Atlantic regions of the US. And some of the most popular retailers selling their products include Walmart, Target, or Kroger. In customers, they have high customer concentration. In 2021, 76% of the revenue came from just three customers and one of the customers represented 34% of the revenues. Generally speaking, having high customer concentration is not good because if all of a sudden one of these customers decides to leave you, you then take a very big hit on your top line. Additionally, on facilities or farms, they really only operate one of around five acres and the rest, as you can see in the screen, are outsourced to contract growers. So basically, they end up reselling most of the product that they obtain from third-party growers. Also, important to note is that the growing capacity of these contract growers doesn't mean that Edible Garden used or bought all the products that were produced in these other farms. No. So even if you see a farm of 55 acres, it doesn't mean that they got to more product from them than from their own farm. 
Now let's move into the industry, which as you probably guessed, it is expected to grow substantially over the coming years. There are different studies that expect a compound annual growth rate, so CAGRs, of between 22.9% and 25.5% until 2030. And this is honestly a lot of growth, which means that Edible Garden or, or similar companies will have massive tailwinds just moving forward in the next years to come. And this of course should benefit them. Um, on competition, in their SEC filing, they mentioned the following companies, although there are of course many other players. So they mentioned Aero Farms, Gotham Greens, Bright Farms, Bowery Farms and Plenty. From all of these, only Aero Farms is expected to go public in the next months through a merger with a SPAC. However, since the merger is still not yet complete, there's not that much information out there, so I prefer to leave that one out, but just something to keep in mind. Then uh, instead, I selected the two companies I mentioned at the beginning, which are Up Harvest and Hydro Farm Holdings. Up Harvest is pretty similar to Edible Garden as they also operate indoor farms. And then Hydro Farm Holdings is not really a competitor, but just another player, because what they do is that they are a manufacturer and distributor of everything that you need in order to build an indoor vertical farms. So it goes from the lighting, lightning, sorry, through the racks and basically everything. And I have put it here because I feel like it's also very good comparison to know which other players you have in the market. If you really want to invest just in vertical farming, you have the option to just invest in just operators of these vertical farms or maybe on the company that is basically producing all the materials that these other companies are buying from. First though, let's go into the financials of Edible Garden and going first with revenues, we see that they only had 11.29% growth over the prior year, but the losses increased by substantially more than 11%, so not so good. Then for revenues, most of these come from herbs and produce and only a very small portion from vitamins and supplements. Then the balance sheet right now before the IPO is looking horrible with a debt ratio of 278.12%, meaning that they have three times more liabilities, so debt than assets. And this is of course not good. After the offering, since they will raise quite a lot of cash, they are expecting to have a balance sheet with a debt ratio of 24.6%, which then it will be very conservative. But it's important to note that without the IPO or additional financing, this company would probably go bankrupt very soon. And what about the other two competitors? Well, first on revenues, Up Harvest is at a similar level to Edible Garden, but Hydro Farm is a much, much larger company. On revenues, it is important to mention that Up Harvest is expecting to make this year 2022 between 24 to 32 million dollars, which would mean an increase of more than 100% over the revenues of 2021. And then on the bottom line, Up Harvest is extremely unprofitable with massive losses in 2021 and high Hydro Farm just reached profitability this past year. After this, let's go now into the IPO price and valuation. And first, as I already mentioned at the beginning, the company still is not publicly traded. Technically, it was meant to go public on Friday. It is not yet available for trading. So I'm assuming that it will go really public today. And otherwise, maybe it gets postponed. Who knows? On the IPO price, the range or the range proposed was between six and eight dollars per share. So for the continuation of this video, I will just assume seven. So the midpoint and at this midpoint, the company is expecting to generate net proceeds from this offering of thirteen point two million dollars approximately. And these proceeds are expected to be used for, of course, general operating purposes. So just to keep the company basically afloat and every afloat and everything running but also to acquire or build new greenhouses near population centers and distribution centers, so basically in key strategic locations. For the IPO, they are offering both shares and warrants in the same amount each, and this means that after you have the offering and also including the possible conversion of warrants to shares, which one warren will be able to convert into one share of Edible Garden, this means that after the offering there will be around 10.7 million shares outstanding, and another point to mention is that currently uh, executive officers of the company own about 71.7% of the total shares, which is good because they keep majority control of the company and even after the offering, they will still be majority shareholders. On valuation, taking the shares outstanding after the offering, the IPO price and the sales for the past year 2021, we have a price to sales ratio of 7.15 times and a market cap of $75 million, so a small micro cap company. 
Personally, for a company with such losses and that only grew last year 11%, I find it quite expensive. And then if we compare the valuation to the competitors, we have App Harvest trading very expensive, but that is also expected to more than double revenues, and Hydro Farm trading much cheaper, although still expected to grow revenues between 20 and 28%, which is not bad at all. And I didn't mention here the PE, but according to Yahoo Finance, the forward PE on Hydro Farm is only of 15. At this point, and after everything we've looked at, it's time for me to give my honest opinion on the company. So what do I think of Edible Garden? Personally, I won't be investing in this company. For me, the answer was super clear. I mean, it's a very small company, a micro cap almost we could say, that is reporting extremely high losses as a percentage of total revenues that is actually doing this IPO because otherwise most probably it would be going bankrupt so it's the only way for them to stay afloat. Yes, they are in a very attractive industry but the thing is that there have been so many corrections in the market recently that there are many other much more well-established companies that are trading at very attractive valuations in my eyes so I don't see the need of taking such high risk investing in Edible Garden when you have companies like I don't know, PayPal, Facebook, just to mention a few, that are trading at extremely attractive valuations. As I said though, the industry, I find it super attractive. So actually, if I wanted to invest in vertical farming, I would most likely choose Hydro Farms as a way to invest in it. The company is much more consolidated, reporting much higher revenues, is already profitable. And of course, I would have to do a lot more due diligence. But to me, it seems like a much more attractive uh, investment than Edible Garden. Anyways, please remember that everything I share in this video is just based on my opinion, my research and my calculations, which of course all of them could be wrong. I take absolutely no responsibility and you should always do your own due diligence whenever investing in this or any stock as I am no financial advisor. With that said though, what are your thoughts on Edible Garden? Will you be investing in its IPO? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed and as always, see you next time.